Welcome to the CPGate tutorial of the Oxy One, where we'll learn how to use it and be creative with it. Let's firstly understand the structure of CVGate layout. There are 8 CVs and 8 gate outputs you can configure in real time with playback on. You can use this view as an innovative tool for performance as well. Turn on off outputs, change voice or track, modulation source, envelopes or clock the vision with the press of a button. The first four top rows are used to assign the output to a specific sequencer. The bottom four rows are the signal type selection, where you can select what kind of CV and gate information you want to send. The first eight columns are the CV outputs, and the later eight are the gate outs. This mode is shared by all sequencers. It's unique for the project and it's not saved per pattern. Now let's learn how to use it step by step. Let's start a simple way. I'm using the OxyPipe breakout module that replicates the 8 CVs and 8 gate outputs, plus clock and CV reset inputs of the Oxy1. I'm sending a CV and gate mono sequence from sequencer 1 to OxyCoral. I have my CV1 connected to voice per octave and gate out to trig on Coral. Press Shift plus LFO to enter the CV gate mode. Press the first pad of sequencer 1 row on the CV side. By default, it will send pitch information from sequencer 1 on CV out 1. Now press the first pad of sequencer 1 row on the gate side to send our gates on gate out 1. By default, it will send the gate information from sequencer 1 on gate out 1. To carry a typical modular voice, you need to choose the same sequencer and voice number for pitch, gate or trig envelope. These are the pitch parameters you can configure. Voice index, the amount of voices available to route to the CVs. For example, in mono mode, there's only one voice. Offset, note offset in CMI tones. Type, the format of CV voltage format, volt per octave, hertz per volt for Korg, and 1.2 volts for Buford. Note that the CV range is constrained by hardware from minus three to five volts. On the gate side, these are the available options. V3 or S3. The output voltage can be set for all the gates to 5 volts or 10 volts in the config menu at the analog section. You can press these pads at any moment to turn them off. Now let's get the scene sound more interesting and expressive using note velocity. Let's pick the second CV output for velocity, which is related to my mono sequence on sequencer 1. I have my velocity output connected to filter CV. We select velocity for the second CV output, pressing the second pad of sequencer 1 row and the corresponding pad on the second row of control signal on the CV side. We can select if node velocity has a gated behavior or not. It's already way more expressive, but you can do more. Let's change the velocity of our steps to make our scene sound even more alive. Go to sequencer 1 and press the first encoder to draw the velocity levels. Our synth sound is now much more evolving than before. We can even add a bit of random perform on the velocity to make it even more dynamic. The CV and gate status are represented in the grid in real time as you can see here. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please give us a like and subscribe. It does motivate us to keep doing these videos. My VCO here has integrated VCAs, so I just need two envelopes to drive the sizzle. Let's use three envelopes from the Oxy one. I connected CVL2 and 3 to sizzle VCAs. A trig envelope is just like an ADSR envelope, where velocity defines the amplitude level and gate length the release time. I'm going to use the same trig envelope from sequencer 1 in the second and third CV outs of sequencer 1 row and set them both as trig envelopes by pressing the corresponding pad on the third row of the control signal. 
Now, to define the envelope, we can use the gate length and velocity of the steps. Go back to sequencer 1, push the third encoder, and change the gate of the steps to have shorter and longer notes, which will affect the release of our trig envelope. Here, how the envelope gets shorter and longer. Now press the first encoder and play with the velocity to affect the amplitude of the trig envelope. Hear the difference in amplitude. Additionally, you can configure the attack time manually or modulate it with the LFO or modulation lanes. And sustain is defined by a percentage of the max amplitude level, being 100% the value defined by velocity. The sustain has more effect on long tight notes mainly. Here's the difference of the filter as I change values of attack. To finalize, let's make our scene change with time, using an LFO to modulate oximeta effects with the amount parameter from CV4 out. For the sake of this example, I'm going to use a different sequencer, number 4. Press the corresponding pads on the last row to define it as mod and pick LFO1 from the time. We go to sequencer 4, go to LFO1 and set it to taste. Our synth line is even more interesting, with the riser being applied a long time. I hope you really enjoyed the first part of the tutorial and can now properly use the routings of the Oxy-1 to interact with the world of modular synths. Thank you, see you soon.